greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thankful once again to be in the house of prayer. I want to call your attention today to the gospel as recorded by John chapter 10. And I want to read a few of those verses begin at verse 1 from the New King James Version. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Verse 5, yet they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Verses 1 through 5 of the aforementioned chapter of John. We want to reason with you today with the subject, which is a question. Who is your shepherd? Who is your shepherd? Three main points we want to emphasize. First one being the sheep. The sheep. Point number two, the other sheep. The other sheep. Lastly, point number three, the goat. The goat. It was common in Palestine to see a shepherd leading his sheep. Jesus often used the local environment to teach his followers, like the parable of the sower, the wheat and the tares, etc. John chapter 10 paints a picture of a pastoral picture And it actually deals with the relationship between Jesus and his disciples. Some shepherds were good, but some were bad. Some were only interested in their own welfare. These placed their own safety before the safety of the sheep. And when the wolves came, they ran away. In other words, they scattered the flock because they weren't that concerned about the flock in the first place. Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Paul speaks to that, and we'll go to that as an illustration. In Acts chapter 20, beginning at the 28th verse, Paul, on his way to Jerusalem, stopped at Miletus, and he summoned the elders in the church at Ephesus and had them come down to meet him in Miletus, which was off the coast of Ephesus. He had a concern for the flock. He had a concern for the church because he recognized the fact that after he left, he used the term that ravenous or savage wolves would enter the flock. And what's so critical about this is savage wolves or ravenous wolves sometimes enter the flock. Sometimes they are from without. 
but they're even more dangerous when they are within. So some of his own elders, some of his own teachers, some of his own preachers, Paul knew that they would scatter the flock, flock by distorting the truth instead of sticking to the word of God to the letter and interpret it according to the Holy Spirit and Jesus the Christ. Yeah. He said to them, uh, Paul spoke to this issue of militants off the coast of Ephesus as I forestated when he spoke to the future responsibilities of the elders in Ephesus. First they were to God, which literally means in the Greek to attend to, in the sense of taking care of themselves and all the flock. In other words, before the shepherd, before the pastor, before the overseer can take care of the flock, before they can provide for the flock, they had to care for their own spiritual well-being. In other words, they have to be concerned with their relationship with God so they can lead, preach, and teach God's sheep. The term overseer, as Paul used, is in the Greek, episkopos, comes from the verb episcopal, which simply means to care for. To shepherd the church of God, that's what God calls the overseer or the episcopus to do. Why? Because the church does not belong to the overseer, it belongs to God. It is the church of God because he has given himself for the church. In other words, he has purchased it with his own blood. So, as Peter said, we need to make our calling and our election sure. And we need to know who our shepherd is. And we need to be firm and confident about our relationship with God. Isn't that right? Yeah. Some, as I said before, were only interested in their own welfare. So Jesus in chapter 10 of John paints this picture. He came first to his own sheepfold. And his own sheepfold would be the true Israel because as the Old Testament teaches, all Israel is not Israel because some of those feel like they are secure because they are descendants of Abraham. But true Israel are those that have faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his finished work. Those that are obedient to his promise. So he came to the believe in Jews first. And he points out in this discourse the only way to enter the sheepfold is through Jesus himself. Because he is the gate. He is the door. He is the one ready. He is the one willing to lay down his life for the sheep. He states that I have other sheep that's not of this fold. In other words, the earl of sheep, no doubt he was alluding to the Gentiles because he came first to Israel, but he came for all of the world. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. His church would stretch far beyond Judaism. The discussion over Jesus continued in the temple courtyard. The crowd had gathered for the Feast of Dedication, which celebrated the cleansing of the temple 
by Judas Maccabeus after its defilement by Antiochus Epiphanes, which was a Greek, that defiled the temple of the Lord, the Jewish temple, by sacrificing a pig on the altar of incense, which prompted war between the Jews and the Greeks. And this, of course, the Feast of Dedication celebrated the cleansing of that temple, which took place after the fight between the Jews and the Greek. Some asked Jesus a question as to whether he was the Christ, the true she did not need to ask Jesus that because those that really loved the Lord and came to him for the right purpose, the Father would draw them. The sheep knows the voice of the shepherd and the shepherd knows his sheep for the Father draws them and they cannot be snatched out of the hand of the Father or the Son. John 10, 28 and 29. He said, I and my Father are one. And that's a sure sign of everlasting life. No one can snatch the believer out of the hand of God when he has done a transformation not a renovation. Chapter 10, verse 37, they tried to stone Jesus. 10 and 40 to 40, true, because of their hostility, Jesus went across the Jordan to Berea, where he was seen more favorably. But prior to that, he gave the scene in chapter 10, verse 10, about the life of a shepherd. And before I close, I want to emphasize the fact that the life of the shepherd can be dangerous. Like the shepherd would gather out in the terrain and he would lay across the gate at night to keep the wolves and the panthers and the lions away from the sheep. The shepherd is to take care of the sheep. A good example, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 and 35 and verse 37, where David killed a lion and a bear to protect God's sheep. The church is one shepherd, one flock. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 22. Verses 3 through 6, and in John chapter 10, 28, it says, They shall never perish. So when the Jews rejected him, Jesus went where he was trusted more favorably. Will you trust him today? Are you sure of your foundation with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Do you know that you have an intimate relationship with Jesus the Christ? Do you know that he was born from a virgin? Do you know that he went to Calvary and died? Do you know that even though he died, he's not dead because he got up on the third day morning? Do you know that he's coming back for the church? Do you know he sits at the foundation at the right hand of the Father, and he intercedes for us right now. Do you know Jesus? Who is your shepherd? If you love him today, say yes. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. The door of the church opens by letter of Christian experience, canon for baptism. If there be one today, won't you come? 
I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield till I die. God bless you. Thank you so much, Mount Olive family, for tuning in this week. And we also would like to thank our visitors for tuning in and being a part of our worship services. Our prayer is that you heard something that will bless you and that will encourage you to deepen your relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, thank you for tuning in. And tune in again next week to hear a powerful message from our pastor. Now, Mount Olive, we have already received directives from our pastor about our tithes and offering. We would like to take this time to invite our guest to sow a seed into this ministry. If the Lord is moving on your heart to plant a seed into Mount Olive, we ask that you do so. And I promise you, you would be planting a seed in good ground. You can also connect with us through our website, Send us a special prayer request you may have for you or a family member. We welcome you to be a part of our church family. Log on to our website to connect with us or click the subscribe button at the end of this message to become a part of our YouTube family. Again, on behalf of our pastor and the entire Mount Olive Church family, thank you. To God be the glory.